All right. Um, the single period model is also widely known as the news vendor model. Uh, you may wonder why why it's called the news vendor because uh, you see um, newspapers is a very typical um, type of perishable products. Uh, you know that when you buy a news, you can buy a newspaper only during uh, the day when it was issued. Uh, so newspapers are perishable product that can be sold only for one day and that's why um, mainly this model is known for the news vendor model all right so um, let's see uh, the model uh, involves or entails uh, two uh, types of uh, costs we have already talked about these we have the shortage cost Okay, and we will denote it here as CS, so S for shortage. And what's the shortage cost? Um, so just ask yourself, what happens if, um, let's say, okay, you, you had a Q equal um, 100, okay, so that's the quantity that you had on hand. Sorry, let me take out this. Okay, so if you have Q uh, of 100 and demand um, turned out to be 130, so you lost the opportunity to sell 30 more units. So what do you lose? You lose the profit that you could have made. And that's why CS is revenue minus cost, which is what? Which is the profit. All right, it's the profit. So this is what uh, you lose per unit. So when you lose the chance to sell 30 uh, extra units, that means you lose the profit times 30. Okay, bear in mind that these CS are per unit and CE is per unit. So the excess cost, CE. What's the excess cost? Again, ask yourself. If you, uh, you held or you ordered 100, and demand turned out to be 80. So you will end up your selling season with 20 on hand that you cannot sell. Now, let's say you're holding newspapers. We know that newspapers, that's it. Um, after the day uh, ends, you cannot sell them anymore. And most probably you are going to discard all of them. So you will be losing the cost that you paid when you purchased these from, from the supplier, right? So you lose all that. However, let's say the cost was uh, $1. Okay, so that's $1 here. Um, here we go. What if a, um, a recycling company is willing to, uh, to buy from you all the remaining newspapers because they can recycle it, right? And they are offering you um, 20 cents. So that's uh, $0.2, right? So what happens here is that you can alleviate your loss. Um, why? Because now your excess cost, what you're going to lose is not the whole dollar, but you, um, you are uh, diminishing it. You are uh, alleviating your loss by 20 cents, so by $0.2. And now your loss is 0 0.8 instead of um, okay, so it's 0 0.8 instead of $1. All right, this is the importance of salvage value. We call that the salvage value. Uh, if you are, for example, uh, buying to tomatoes and at the end of the selling season you have some remaining, you can sell it, for example, for a company that may catch up and this will be your salvage value. Now, in some cases, you have a salvage. In some other cases, you don't have a salvage. So you have to understand that. And based on this, you you make your calculation. What's your actual excess cost? CE? Now, what's the objective of our news vendor model? Of course, we need to find out what should be our optimal stock level, ordering quantity, inventory level, Q star. We're going to refer to it as Q star uh, in our notations. Um, from now onwards, all right. And this Q star, you remember we had this trade-off between uh, the surplus cost and the extra, and the uh, shortage cost. So uh, this Q star would minimize the sum of the expected cost, the shortage and excess cost. 
So it ensures a balance. Remember the balance that I showed you in the previous slide. It ensures a balance between these two. Uh, um, all right, and this balance, in fact, it's not that easy to find. Uh, why? Because first of all, the unit short cost and excess costs are not the same. Second, the probability of uh, of having a shortage and probability of excess is not very straightforward. But um, and that's why what we do, we do, we run what we call an incremental analysis. Okay, and I'm not going to go in details about that, but what I want you to know is this, that at the optimal quantity, okay, we are balancing between two uh, costs, and this cost is equal to the excess cost, the unit excess cost times the probability that demand is less than the optimal quantity, or that Q star, okay, and when demand is less, that means I have an excess. That's why we are multiplying by CE. And the other cost is CS times the probability that demand is greater than Q star. Okay. So let's see uh, how we're going to use that to find the optimal quantity. Okay, so we said that at the optimal quantity, um, we have this equality. All right, um, let's develop this equation and we'll end up having this. Again, I don't want to go in details how we came out with that, but I just want to tell you this, that you may wonder why we had this priority and that priority, how comes that in the last one we only have this? Okay, which is similar to only that one. Um, bear in mind that this value, okay, and this value, they are related. Why? Because these events demand less or equal than Q, and the event demand greater than, these are complement, which means the probability that demand um, is less or equal than Q, plus the probability that demands greater than Q is one. So you can uh, there is a relationship between one of the, between these two. One is equal to one minus the other one. That's why I could end up with only one expression of probability, and uh, then this will be equal to that. And this is very very important for us because usually the short costs and the excess costs these are costs that are uh, more or less easily to be found. Easy to be found. All right, uh, before we proceed, just remember one thing, that the probability that demand is less or equal than Q, this is one measure of what we call the service level, all right? What's the service level? This is your capability uh, or the capability of a firm to satisfy its customers. And this is why um, if demand is less than the quantity that you have on hand, you are able to satisfy your customers. And that's why uh, this probability is widely used as a measure for your service level. So if you have a Q star, that means you are reaching your optimal service level. You see, we are calling it now SL star. So optimal service level is the probability that demand is less than the the inventory that you have on hand when this inventory on hand is your Q star. Why it's important? Because now I can rewrite this equation here. Okay, I can rewrite that in the terms of service level. So my optimal service level would happen at this ratio. You see, so this is very important. Uh, based on certain given uh, unit shortage costs and unit excess costs, I can find my optimal service level. But you know that our objective is not to find the service level, but to find the Q star. Why? Well, uh, a Q star is, is related to the service level. We are able to determine the service, uh, the optimal um, uh, inventory level, Q star, from the now found optimal service level and it depends on what uh, probability distribution of demand we have. So I'm going to show you next uh, two cases when demand is has a normal distribution and once we find SL 
how to find Q, and when demand has a discrete probability distribution, how to find Q star uh, given that S star, uh, SL star is uh, found. Okay, so we're starting with the case when demand has a normal distribution. Okay, um, so if demand has a normal, you know that when any variable has a normal distribution, um, we have two parameters for this distribution. We have the mean and the standard deviation. So here we go. I'm showing you here a um, normal curve where the mean is equal to mu. Okay, so how are we going to use that? We know that the service level that we find equal to the CS over CS plus CE, it's equal to the P of demand less or equal than Q star. So what does it mean? You see, this one, this expression, probably that demand, which is our variable here that has a normal distribution, is less or equal than Q star, will be equal to a given value, sort of for a known value. So how we are going to, uh, to use that? For example, if uh, we found that the optimal service level equal to 0.7, Okay, how, how can I use this information? I know that the demand has this normal distribution. So I'm going to say that when, when SL is 0 0.7, that means the probability that demand is less or equal than Q star is 0 0.7. You see, this is now known, this area, the, the hashed area is 0 0.7. And this is now uh, uh, I'm going to use that to find what's that value of Q star such that the probability that demand is less than uh, a Q star is 0 0.7. Um, using your statistics um, knowledge, we know that any value of this variable that has a normal distribution can be exp or can uh, the distance between any value and the mean can be expressed in terms of z sigma right where z is the unit normal distribution so then i can tell that q star is equal to mu okay the known demand for the uh, uh, so, uh, sorry the mean uh, of the normal distribution plus a certain value of z that I'm calling z star because it corresponds to q star times the standard deviation which is known. So what's left for me is to find that z star. How to find the z star? We're going to look into the table and I'm going to uh, refresh your memory on how to look in the table in the next slide. All right, so I look in the table for a z star such that p of z less or equal than z star is 0 0.7 right and then i plug this 0 0.7 i will lock, plug it here then with the mu known and sigma known i can find my q star problem solved so i'm going to illustrate this um, procedure in the next slide with a with an example